Hello, this is Mr. Wynn, and this video is of the hyperbolas part of conics. So our hyperbola is very similar to an ellipse. Uh, the difference is that the ellipse is where you add the two distances, uh, point is from the two focus. Uh, in a hyperbola, it's actually, you're going to subtract or get the difference of the two distances from uh, the point to the two focus, or each foci, um, and get a positive constant. All right, so here d2 to d1 if you subtract them you get a number even right here d2 to d1 strike it's the exact same number it's a positive constant for the difference uh, the graph has two discrete branches so here's a horizontal one uh, they don't have a vertical one on here but there is a vertical one as well the line through the two foci intersects hyperbola at its two vertices so this focus is really connect this little dotted line it crosses here and here at the each vertex uh, notice the vertex the center of the vertex is still a so that didn't change from the ellipse and the line segment connecting the vertices is called the transverse axis and the midpoint transverse axis is still the center um, also notice that the center to the focus is still c that didn't change but the difference here is c is bigger than a in the ellipse a was bigger than c because the focus is inside. Now the focus is on the outsides. All right, and we're going to get an equation very similar to an ellipse. So that's on the next slide. So here's the standard equation. Notice it looks exactly the same, but the only difference is it's the minus sign and the plus sign, but also they might switch this. So the standard form of equation in hyperbola with the standard HK is this if it's horizontal and this if it's vertical. So how do you know it's horizontal or vertical? You check which one's positive, what's first. So here x is first, so this is going to be horizontal, and here y is first, so this is going to be vertical. A is no longer the bigger one. It might be smaller. It could be bigger, but now we just matter which one's positive of the two fractions. All right, the vertices are a units from the center, and the foci are c units from the center. That's normal. And we get c squared equals a squared b squared now. And if the center is 0, 0, you plug in 0 to each hk, you get these two. But again, use this formula. That's more generic for any... Uh, center. All right, here's the picture below for the different orientations. Here x is first, it's positive fraction, so that's why it's horizontal. Here the y squared thing is first as a positive fraction, so that's why it's vertical. And from the center, you go up and down c to get each focus. So from the center, you go right and left c to get each focus by adding and subtracting. All right, so first it says find the standard equation of hyperbola. Find the standard form equation of hyperbola with foci in a1, 2, 5, 2, and vertices 0, 2, 4, 2. So the midpoint of either the foci or the vertices will get you the center of the circle, so, or not circle, of the hyperbola. So we get 2, 2 after doing that. Then we need to find c and a. Remember, c is the distance from the focus to the center. How far is from a1 to 2? It's three spots. Or they did a 5 to 2 is three spots. A is the distance from the center to the vertex. How far is from 4 to 2? It's just 2. Once you have A and C, you can do the formula to find B. B equals the square root of C squared minus A squared. Fill it in, simplify, you get the square root of 5. Once you know A and B, you just plug into the formula. Here, because it's horizontal, we have the x squared thing first. All right, so x minus h, so x minus 2 squared, over A squared, so 2 squared then minus y minus k, which is y minus 2 squared, over b squared, so that's square root of 5 squared, equals 1. You fix that, 2 squared is 4, square root of 5 squared is 5. That's the answer. All right, we have asymptotes for a hyperbola. It's these uh, diagonal lines that the hyperbola will not really cross or intersect or touch. Uh, each hyperbola has two asymptotes that intersect at the center of the hyperbola, as shown in this figure, 10, 33. The asymptotes pass through the vertices of a rectangle of dimensions 2a and 2b. So that's telling you how long, how well the base length and the height of the rectangle. Center again hk. The line segment of length of 2b joins these two things is uh, called the conjugate axis instead of the transverse axis. So transverse goes through the foci and vertices. The conjugate does not. That's like the perpendicular one. Anyway, the equations for asymptotes of our problem are this if it's horizontal and this if it's vertical. Now that's kind of complicated, so I'm going to tell you it's the same as using point-slope form using the vertex point hk, because that is a point. 
Remember that's y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus h1, uh, x1. But uh, x1 and uh, y1 are just h and k. Uh, there's two of them are positive and negative. So here's the positive line, and then here's the negative line. The slope's the exact same number. So we'll try an example next. Using asymptotes, sketch a hyperbola. So sketch the equation x, uh, 4x squared minus y squared 16. So first, we have to put in standard form. We want 1 on the right, so we divide both things by 16. And reduce, and we get this x squared over 2 squared minus y squared over 4 squared is 1. We see that this is horizontal because x squared is positive. We see a is 2, b is 4. So because it is horizontal, we start at the center, 0, 0. We go right 2, left 2, and we go up 4, down 4. We could find the slope. Here from the center, we count rise or run. So this goes up 4 over 2, which reduces 2. And then if you want to do the negative slope, you could do right here. Rise over 1, we go down 4 over 2, so that's going to be negative 2. All right, so you see the slope formula. You could also use like, like this. That's the same. And uh, instead of doing this one I used here, you could try this one. That's uh, up 4 over 2. You can even do this one or this one. All right, so we conclude that A is 2, B is 4. Transverse is horizontal. Vertices are negative 2 positive. That's left 2, right 2. Uh, and what's the conjugate axis is up 4, down 4, so negative 4, positive 4. Using those four points, sketch that rectangle in this top picture. Uh, find C. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. We know what A squared and B squared is. We get a 2 root 5. And if you want the foci, it's the center plus or minus this thing. Uh, since horizontal, we're going to subtract and add it to the x. So this is 0 minus 2 root 5, which is negative 2 right. And then there's 0 plus 2 root 5, which is 2 root 5. And then by drawing the asymptotes, this the corners of the rectangle, you can complete the sketch like this picture right here. And note the assets are y goes positive 2x, y goes negative 2x. Alright, find the assets of the hyperbola. So sketch this equation in general form. Find the equations of the assets and foci. So we're going to do complete the square. Group the x things together and the y things together. We're going to factor out this g sub 4 to make this a 1. We figure out what's missing and add to the other side as well. Complete the square. Then we have to make sure the right side is 1, so we divide everything by negative 12 to get this. Remember the positive thing goes first, so y squared goes to the front. This minus x squared thing goes second. It goes 1. We now see a is 2, b is root 3. Remember a is always first with the positive fraction. Alright, so from this equation we include that our parabola is vertical because it's y squared. The center is negative 1, that's h, always equals x, then 0 for k. Vertices, negative 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. We know that because we're going to go up and down 2 from the center, negative 1, 0. So up 2, that's negative 1, 2. Down 2 is negative 1, negative 2. And has contra axis endpoints with negative 1 minus root 3 and then negative 1 plus root 3 because we're going to abstract b from the y value, uh, from the x value going left and right. Alright, so it's hyperbola, draw the rectangle through those four points, find the asymptote equations uh, using a is 2 and b is root 3. We include the asymptotes r, y equals 2 over root 3, that's the slope, x plus 1, then y equals negative 2 over root 3, then x plus 1. Finally, you get the foci by using the equation c squared is a squared b squared. Fill in a and b, solve, you get squared 7. So the foci are going to be squared 7 away from the center. If it's vertical, you can add subtract that to the y value, which was 0. So that's why it has just negative 1, 2 plus root 7, negative 1, negative 2 minus root 7. Correction, I said that slightly wrong. So the foci is past the vertex. So you actually do the vertex number, then minus that for here, then the vertex number plus that root 7 from here. That's how you get that. Remember, because here, the foci are actually outside the vertices, not inside. All right, example four, using asymptotes to find the standard equation. They gave us the vertices, 3, negative 5, 3, 1, right there and there. We could find the center. And also they gave us the two asymptotes, so we drew that. So using the middle finish, center is 3, negative 2. Also, we figure out that the hyperbola is vertical and has a transverse axis with A equals 3, because that's how far it is from the center. 
then using the original equations, we know the slope, uh, positive 2, negative 2. Remember, the slope is equal to a over b if it's vertical. So we know a, so 2 equals 3 over b. Solve for b, get 3 halves. And you can also do it for the second one. Where the negative slope equals negative a over b, solve for b, so you get 3 halves. Once you have a and b, you can find the formula. If you know the h, k, a, and b, uh, it's vertical, so make sure y is squared first. And a always goes with the first fraction, the positive fraction, so that's why it's 3. We found b is 3 halves squared equals 1. All right, also we have eccentricity, just like ellipses. Same formula, e equals c over a. But this time c is bigger than a, remember, because it's focused on the outside, so it's going to be bigger than 1. Uh, if it's large, the branches are pretty much flat, like this picture. If it's small, then it's going to be very narrow, like this picture. All right, here's some applications. Uh, World War II, it shows how powers are powers can be used for radar detection systems. Uh, you can read if you want. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, another one is orbits, a comet, and solar system. Uh, again, you can read this if you want. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it. But I will worry about is this the general equation of conics. So we have general form. We can actually figure out what kind of conic it is depending on what A and C multiply into. So hopefully I realize circles where A and C must be the same number. Remember the number for the x squared and y squared have the exact same thing. For parabola, A times C must equal zero. Because there's only either x squared for a vertical parabola or y squared for a horizontal parabola. Can't have both. For an ellipse, A times C must be bigger than zero. Uh, they have to have like signs. Because there's both x squared and y squared. It's kind of related to a circle, but the numbers in front are different. For hyperbola, a times c will be less than zero. That'd be unlike signs. One's be positive, uh, one's be negative because you have to subtract them. And for ellipse, you'll be adding the two fractions. And the test above is valid if the graph is a conic. Again, it doesn't apply to things like x squared plus y squared goes to negative one because you can't have a radius of negative one. So, last example, classify conics from general equations. Tell me what each one of these are. And again, uh, here's the little chart. So, a, we have 4x squared. So, a is 4. We have no y squared. So that's good. That's going to be a parabola. Uh, that's going to be a vertical parabola. But here I'm going to go with this formula. A is 4. C is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. That's why it's a parabola. B, we have 4x squared, negative 1y squared. They are different, but 4 times negative 1, that's a negative number, negative 4. That's smaller than 0. That's a hyperbola because we have subtracting, and there can be different a and b values. C, we have positive 2 positive 4, different values, both of them, 2 and 4 is 8, that's going to give us an ellipse, because that's greater than 0. And the last one, we have 2 and 2, they're the same number, so this has to be a circle. So A equals C equals 2, that's a circle. And that's it. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure you ask any questions in class. See you soon. Bye.